Hey guys, welcome to my channel, The Analyst. Today we will look at an unsupervised machine learning algorithm called K-means. Now the reason it's called unsupervised is because you don't really have the labels, right? So the target is not present. We only have a feature set and we do not know exactly how we're going to label each record for a combination of these features. We will be using the iris data set, it's pretty famous. And the iris data set contains the labels, but that need not bother us. All right, moving to the demo. Okay. This is the iris data set, all right. Uh, and it does contain the labels, but like I said, let's ignore it. Okay. Let's start. So we are the first few lines as usual. I clean up my environment. Then I use the Pacman library to load. The next step is basically wherein I read my data set, the Aris data set, and then I check the summary of it. Right, as you can see, we over here is a summary of my iris data set, and we have around 150 observations if you see over here. All right, five variables, and each of them there are three species that are present, uh, 50 records of each. Now my next step would be to actually if you have a look at the data set over here, right? Uh, the values are varying. Right? If you look at petal width, it's like in the 0 0.2 ranges. Uh, the lens, see the lens is like the 5 ranges. So what we need to do is basically we will need to normalize and scale the data. So over here I normalize and I scale and then if you have a look at the summary you can see everything lies in the 0 to 1 range right compared to over here. Alright so let's actually to get a better idea of this let's uh, plot these data points alright and see exactly how they are clustered so if you see we've got three distinct cl clusters right you can make out uh, Satosa and so on we are indicated by the red green and blue right so this is by petal length and width Similarly, we plotted with respect to sepal length and width, all right. And it's a little bit difficult over here to actually cluster between the green and the blue species. Okay, let's, let's lower this down a bit. All right, so moving ahead. We will now basically try to find out from so in K means also we need to know how many clusters need to be formed, right? Uh, so for that what we'll do is that you know it uh, we'll define a center list, right? And we'll check from numbers like one to ten, which basically indicates whether one cluster will be formed or ten clusters would be optimal. And then basically we have the k-means algorithm that we use and we use the normalized data set and centers basically are varied from 1 to 10. Basically what we do is then we save the sum of the squares, right? 
Luego de esa moto se ve pero. Uh, after running this algorithm, what we see is that uh, we ran like okay, so we try to form one cluster, ten clusters to see exactly where the sum of the squares is the least. So as we keep on increasing the number of clusters that we form, the squares, sum of squares, keep on decreasing. However, uh, after one point, you see that. The decrease is very less okay so probably computation wise it may not make sense in this case we have only 150 observations so it does not really matter with five variables uh, 150 observation five variables so it doesn't really matter but uh, computation wise if our data set is large it may matter let's basically plot the elbow curve for uh, the clusters 1 to 10 and see exactly the total sum of squares as you can see after number 3 it does not really make that much of a difference okay so let's assume that 3 is our optimal cluster and let's check how accurate the algorithm is with k equal to 3 yeah. so again we run the k means we have 3 centers so we'll form 3 clusters and basically we train the model then we basically plot a confusion matrix to check the accuracy of the model when we have 3 clusters ok so this is the completion matrix with each of the 3 species 1, 2, 3 corresponds to the 3 species over here, right? So, along the diagonal, we can see is that the model has predicted correctly. And the other parts, like 3, right? And 14. These have not been, pre been predicted correctly. Then we basically just calculate the accuracy, which is basically the sum of the diagonal divided by the total number of records and we get an 88% accuracy we could even try for higher cluster numbers but like I said uh, computation wise it may not make sense the correct way to go about it would be to pick either 3 or 4 at the max don't go beyond it because it uh, there's not really much a difference in the sum of squares Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you.